Hello everyone, welcome you to another video of the 2018 BMAT BSTAT series and in this video we are going to discuss the last problem that is the eighth problem which was one of the toughest problems in this paper and it says that if n is greater than or equals to 3 so you have an n cross n matrix A where all the entries are either 1 or negative 1 and you have that a k1 is equals to 1 so that means the first column of the matrix all the entries are 1 and also you have that summation k equals to 1 to n a k i a k j is equals to 0 and that means basically if you are multiplying two columns of the matrix element wise and adding them up and that will give you zero. And with all this given information, we have to prove that n is a multiple of four. So since it's given that the entries of the first column are all zero, so let's try to apply this here. So if we take our j to be not equals to one and we are taking our i to be equals to 1, then what we have is that this summation here, there all the a k 1 will be equals to 1 because i is equals to 1 and that will be nothing but summation k going from 1 to n a k j will be equals to 0. And so this implies that the sum of the elements of the jth column will be equals to 0 if j is not equals to 1. Now since n is greater than equals to 3, so we can choose our i and j such that i is strictly greater than 1 and j is strictly greater than i. And then the summation k going from 1 to n a k i will be equals to 0 from here and summation a k equals to 1 to n a k j will also be equals to 0 as we have derived here and finally the given condition here which says that summation k going from 1 to n a k i a k j will be equals to 0 and now we will be basically analyzing this part so now on analyzing this part we see that this a k i and a k j they both can be negative one or they both can be positive one or one of them is positive one and the other one is negative one so there are four cases coming out so we'll consider the number n1 comma 1 which denotes the number of times a k i is equals to a k j is equals to 1. So that means in this summation the number of times that they both are equals to 1 we are calling that number as n11. So now we have n1 comma minus 1 as the number of times we have a k i is equals to 1 and a k j is equals to negative 1. And this happens for k in 1, 2, dot, dot, dot till n. And again we take uh, so one of them is negative one that is the first one and the second one is positive one so a k i is equals to negative one and a k j is equals to positive one so the number of times that happens in that summation we call it uh, we call the number to be n minus one one and similarly we have n to be negative one negative one as the number of times we have 
a k i is equals to negative one and a k j to be equals to negative one in that summation. So whatever b n one one n minus one one or all those four numbers, this summation we know that it has to be equals to n. So n one one plus n one minus one plus n minus one one plus n minus one minus one should be equals to n because k can run from one to n and for each k equals to one two or three one of these cases happens right so these are the four cases that can happen and so we have the sum to be equals to n and now we have analyzed this portion so the result from this portion can also be applied to this two smaller portions so since we know that the sum of the elements in the ith column as well as the sum of the elements in the jth column is equals to 0 so let's now break them apart so now in 1 1 and plus in 1 minus 1 so this number tells us that the number of times a k i is equals to 1 and in 1 comma 1 plus in minus 1 comma 1 tells us the number of times or the number of k's for which a k j is equals to 1 Similarly, in negative 1, comma 1 plus in negative 1, negative 1 tells us the number of k's for which this a k i is equal to negative 1. And the last part that is in 1, negative 1 plus in negative 1, comma negative 1 is the number of times or the number of k's from 1 to n for which a k j is equals to negative 1. And so what we have is since we have the sum of the ith column, so I mean the sum of the elements of the ith column, k going from 1 to n, that is equals to 0. And so this implies that we have some sum of ones minus some sum of negative ones for which the sum becomes zero right because the entries can either be plus one or negative one so when does in this summation we have those plus ones so k such that a k i is equals to one and for those many k's for which a k i is equal to negative 1 and that we have analyzed it here and that is in 1 comma 1 plus in 1 comma minus 1 which tells us for how many k's we have a k i to be equals to 1 and minus of in minus 1 comma 1 minus in minus 1 comma minus 1 so this tells us that for how many times uh, a k i is equals to negative 1 now coming to the summation a k j where k is running from 1 to n sum of ones where a k j is equals to one and those negative ones where a k j is equals to negative one and so we have in one comma one plus in minus one comma one so this number tells us that for those many k's there are this many case for which a k j is equals to 1 
minus of n one comma minus one and n one minus one comma minus one. So this number tells us how, for how many k's we have a kg to be equals to negative one. And now coming to the final part that is the sum of a k i a k j is equals to zero. And this is basically the number of times we have this a k i is equals to a k j is equals to one. So those many ones will be counted. And summation again one for which we have a k i is equals to a k j is equals to negative one. So this sum is nothing but the number of k's here plus the number of k's that are satisfying these two conditions, right? And now let's analyze the negative part. So summation. So those many ones will be counted where a k i is equals to one and a k j will be equals to negative one. And also those many ones will be counted for which a k i is equals to negative one and a k j is equals to positive one. And from here we get that in one comma one plus in minus one comma minus one minus now this is in one comma minus one minus in minus one comma one and that is equals to zero. So now you see that we have got three equations. One is this to be equals to zero. And the other one is this to be equals to zero. And the third equation is this is equals to zero. So here we have the three equations. And now if you add the first and the second, so adding the first and the second, we get two times in one one minus two times in minus one minus one is equals to zero. And so this implies in minus one comma minus one is equals to in one comma one. And adding the first one with the third one, we get two times in one comma one minus two times minus one comma one is equals to zero. And this implies that in minus one comma one is equals to in one comma one. And adding the second one to the third one, we get that two times in one comma one minus two times in one comma minus one is equals to zero. And this implies in one comma minus one is equals to in one comma one. And so now you remember that we had our n to be equals to this one. And so our n, which is equals to one comma one plus in one comma minus one plus in minus one comma one plus in minus one comma minus one is equals to, now you see that all of them are equals to in one comma one. And so this becomes four times in one comma one. 
And now remember that in one one was the count on k for which a k i and a k j they both were equals to one. And now since n is greater than equals to three, so we have that n one one has to be greater than equals to one, and so we can say that four divides n.